Amen. Yeah, that heat is on. We made sure it was on, so we should be able to fill it from uh, right to left. Amen. I know you got your coat on. Amen. Keep your coat on, whatever you got to do. Amen. All right. God is good. How many of y'all are ready for the word? Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Father, we do thank you and we praise you, Lord, that we indeed declare it is well with our souls. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we are going to praise your name. Regardless of what people are doing in this world, we know our God and the people who know their God shall wax strong and do great exploits. We declare and decree, Father, that even in this hour of darkness, light is going to spring forth through our lives. We are uh, the light of the world, as you declare. We are the salt of the earth. And, Father, we thank you for Jesus' reign and his rule and his kingship and his lordship over our lives. He is Lord and Savior. And we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone to believe it. We are in that category of believing people and so we thank you lord it's the power of god the bible says we are kept by the power of god and we thank you lord that we are daily being kept we're daily being delivered we're daily being healed we're daily being restored we're daily being preserved father we thank you for the life of your word and we declare father the zoe of god is permeating our being our beings father it is even quickening us lord hallelujah that though our outward man Man is perishing yet day by day the inward man is being renewed but we have a promise in Romans chapter uh, 8 verse 11 the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead if it dwell in us he is also quickening our mortal bodies so we receive that divine quickening come on lay your hands on your body father in the name of Jesus I receive that divine quickening by the resurrection of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit even now I speak to my body and I decree to you be quickened in Jesus name father I declare from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet I am whole I am sound I resist infirmity I resist weakness the Bible says let the weak say I am strong I declare I am strong because because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Glory to God. Uh, uh, a merry heart. Uh, do a good like medicine, Father. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be sorrowful. I refuse to be weighed down by the cares of this world. I choose with the act of my will. I choose to make a joyful noise unto the Lord God Almighty. And Father, I thank you that every time I praise, uh, my body is being ministered to by the medication of the word. My medication is in the word. And I thank you in the name of Jesus. I refuse to be infirm. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus by the blood of the lamb. That redemptive blood. That I am redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I am redeemed from sickness and disease. I am redeemed from premature death. I declare I will live and not die. And declare the works of the Lord God Almighty. Not one nanosecond of my life will be deprived by the devil. I declare in the name of Jesus uh, you are a thief and you've been found whatever you've stolen I call it back uh, I declare a sevenfold recompense uh, whatever the palmer worm the canker worm and the caterpillar has stolen I declare restoration in my life now I decree it is so be recovered in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name you need to get up off your feet and shout like you know it's so in Jesus mighty name hallelujah fight for it glory to God fight for what's yours glory to God I'm not gonna lay down glory to God I'm not gonna quit glory to God I fight for what the Bible says fight glory to God the good fight of faith and lay whole unto eternal life
Hallelujah. It's mine. Glory to God. I contend for it. I declare it's mine. I walk in it whether I feel like it or not. I declare I'm walking by faith and not by sight. And every place my feet trod, I declare it's a place of dominion. It's a place of triumph. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, by the authority of the word of God, I prophesy over my life. I speak what God has said and I declare it is so. Glory to God. I'm getting stirred up in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Be prophetic. Prophesy over your life. I didn't come in here feeling good this morning, but I feel good now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus mighty name. I just said I was going to pray through it. I was going to praise through it. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. 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 He's a thief. He tries to take what belongs to us, but he's a liar. He is a liar. There is no truth in him. And I declare that I'm a world overcomer because I'm born, because, amen, I'm born of God and greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. My faith is more precious than gold, amen, silver and gold that perish, amen. And I thank God that we have something that is more precious than monetary systems, uh, amen. It is it's the very thing that the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Wherever we go and take us today. In Jesus name. You know, saints, I, I just really believe that in the hour that we're living in and I, 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 I can say this. Uh, by, by, by authority, the authority of the Holy Spirit, that CFCC, amen, will not lose the fear of the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. We, we understand it's by the fear of the Lord that we're being preserved. Amen. We're being kept because we understand who God is, but we're living in a godless society and we're living in the era of a backslidden church. And so God's answer for the church in this hour is repent. God's answer for the church in this hour is return to the fear of the Lord. And half of the stuff that we see manifesting in the midst of the church, glory to God, would not be happening if we had the reverential fear of God. Amen. And so it's imperative that we teach on the fear of the Lord because you only have faith for what you hear. If, 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 if you're constantly being bombarded with godliness and compromise and lukewarm Christianity, that's exactly what you're going to beget. You're going to beget after your kind. But amen. Bless the Lord. We thank God that we are a God fearing people. We reverence him. We honor him. Glory to God. And we're going to live for him regardless of who don't want to live for him. I'm saved down in my sanctified soul. I'm saved down, glory to God, down to the, the, the very bones and the marrow in my body. Amen. I, I declare my marrow is saved. Glory to God. You, come on, somebody need to speak to your marrow right now. Come on, speak life to your marrow. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It, it penetrates even to the dividing of son of, of soul and spirit. It goes down into the joints. It goes down into the bones. It goes down into the marrow. It goes down into the molecular structure of your cell. It goes in there and it rearranges glory to God. Everything has to conform to the word. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Glory to God. It goes in and does corrective surgery. Amen. The word, glory to God, will cut away stuff that don't belong there. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where I am, but we're going to see where we're going to go. Hallelujah. We're, 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 we're living in an era where people don't believe in the authority of the power of God's word. Amen. Bless the Lord. See, see what, what is happening is people.
people don't realize that the word is all you need. The word will clean people up. You don't have to compromise. Amen. You don't have to water down the gospel. Hallelujah. All you got to do is preach the word of God. Listen, man. You don't have to worry about whether you're going to offend people. The gospel is for offense. It will offend you. It won't let you live the way you want to. It won't let you stay where you are going to God. The word of God will lift you up. Amen. The word of God will cleanse you. The word is like water. It will wash you, glory to God. It will wash the stench of your sin away. All you got to do is preach the word. Don't worry about trying to liquidate it. Don't worry, worry about trying to make it seeker friendly. All you got to do is preach the truth and Jesus himself will begin to clean the life of the person up. We need to return to the fear of the Lord. And see what people think, pastor, they think that if we, if we declare that God is holy, if we declare that we, we should reverence his holiness and that he said, be ye holy as I am holy. He requires his people to be like him. Amen. That, that, that if we, amen, bless the Lord, preach the holiness of God. Amen. If we declare that God requires us to be upright and righteous, you think that people ain't going to want to change. But if you declare the mind of God, people will begin to change because when they have truth, truth will begin to set them free and, and, and people are worried about whether the church is going to be wiped out or not people are going to be able to sit and stay no don't worry about that you just preach the truth of the living God listen don't try to compromise the gospel because you're afraid glory to God that people are going to leave no if this is Jesus said my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow glory to God he, he says I know my own and they that hear my voice, they come to me. Uh, but the problem is, you worried about them hearing your voice, glory to God, overhearing his voice. That's why you liquidate the word. That's why you compromise the word. Because you're rather trying to draw them to yourself. Ah, the idols of human personality are about to fall in this nation. It's turned into the cult of human personality obscuring the glory of who Jesus is we have to return to the fear of the Lord and so what people tend to think that if we if we begin to talk about holiness, if we begin to talk about the 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 the, the fear of the Lord, you, they think that you you're being legalistic. That's legal. No, you better begin to warn the sinner. Amen. You be, yeah, listen, the Bible said that if you don't warn the sinner uh, of the state that their lives are in, and come on now, if you don't warn them, that blood is going to be required upon your hands. That's why those of us who preach and teach the gospel are going to be under greater condemnation. Glory to God. And, and I, I believe that even those uh, who are preaching this watered down gospel, glory to God, they have forgotten that God's going to hold them in contempt. Come on. They're going to be in contempt of not preaching the truth. You're going to be hauled off in front of the courts of heaven. And Jesus is going to say, you defamed me before the people. Where am I going to go, Lord? Go to Psalm 34. Let me go there. I ain't want to be loud. I'm trying to be calm, man. <laughs> Look, now I'm, I'm telling you, I'm afraid, man. I'm, I'm really afraid. Because men and women of God have lost their fear. Their fear of the Lord. Go to Psalm 34. Psalm 
Psalm 34. Let's start at verse 1. I want to get down to, I want to add uh, verse 12. Because we have verse 11 here. I want to read down into it. Let me go back to my actual notes. Psalm 34, verse 11, 1 through 11 says, And I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. David says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Somebody shout natural fears. So, so God doesn't want our lives to be tormented by natural fear. And so that's the kind of fear he wants us delivered from. Amen. So, so say natural fear and demonic fear. Natural fear and demonic fear. All right. So this kind of fear is to be frightened or dismayed or to have dread or to, be, uh, uh, to have terror or have consternation. This term fear refers to all the natural causes of fear. He doesn't want us to be dominated by natural fear. When in some cases, natural fear, fear can help you. Amen. Uh, because uh, God can place natural fear in you at a precise time. And you'll know that's something that you ain't supposed to do. Amen. And if you heed that, amen, it's a warning from God. But to be terrorized by demonic fear is not what God wants us to be dominated by. All right. And the scripture says they looked unto him and were lightning. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him. Fear who? The Lord. Here it denotes the reverential awe of the glory of his presence. And this is what God says the church have to now regain a, a renewed revelation of is the reverential uh, awe of the glory of God's presence. Listen, you can't just do anything that you want to do if you know that you are in the presence of the Lord. It's, listen, uh, uh. Moses had an encounter with God at the burning bush. Such awe of the glory of God's presence uh, that was not consuming that bush that God had to tell him, the place wherein thou standing is holy ground. Take off thy shoes. So, so Moses' heart uh, was literally pricked by the revelation that he was standing in the presence or the whole, the, the presence or the, he was encountering the holiness of God. And so Moses took off his shoes out of reverence for God's uh, uh, when we come into God's presence God's presence will invoke us to take off some stuff <laughs> we'll, we'll, to strip off some stuff amen bless the Lord that there's some stuff that's hanging on our lives if we were truly acknowledging the holiness of God and if we really had the fear of the Lord there's some things that we would not allow ourselves to do Come on, say amen. If you truly feared God. That's why I'm afraid because the things that I see manifesting through 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 leadership in, in God's church in this hour, it's like how in the world can you do these things if you truly say you fear God? How can you go to bed at night if you truly say you fear God? How can you keep on living and doing the exact things that you're doing if you truly say you fear God? How can you have a conscience uh, 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 of even allowing yourself to contemplate that you can keep on in this vein not knowing that God is a God of justice and judgment and at some point God's going to recall you if you don't repent. The mercy of God stays his hand. But at some point, the mercy runs out. I know the Bible says that mercy rejoices against judgment. But we must not lose the revelation that God still judges. Now, now notice what it says here. It denotes the reverential fear and glory of his presence. He said to do what? 
and deliver them. Then it says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I know I'm jumping around. Blesses the man that trusts in him. Notice what it says, oh, fear the Lord. That is the reverential fear uh, of his glory. But also it is the connotation of realizing that God deserves the kind of fear that reminds us that he is still a judge. Tell your neighbor's neighbor. May we never lose that. It says, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to, oh, watch this now. You don't have to compromise. Uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to try to uh, prostitute God's people. There is no want to those that, so, so there's blessing. Tell your neighbor's neighbor. There's blessing. In walking in the revelation of the fear of the Lord. Notice what the scripture says. There is no want to them that fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But they that fear the Lord shall not want. So you and I can have the comfort and the consolation that says that when we, we walk in right alignment with him as we reverence him as sovereign ruler over all that concerns me. I don't have to worry about ever compromising. Amen. He himself will supply my needs based on the revelation of me reverencing his holiness in my life. And so folks don't understand this dimension of this revelation that we as his children should have this healthy uh, revelation of uh, uh, awe of God and that he also is judge. And ultimately, every last one of us will stand before him and give an account. You know, the scripture says that even every idle word, ooh, Jesus, we forget about this stuff. So I'm saying, Lord, help me. I was telling my wife today while we were, I could this, this way I, I have to repent. Y'all know me. Y'all know your pastor. This is the place where I got to repent all the time. I never want to get to the place where I just allow myself to live that way, where I become so carnal in that thing, where there's no longer any conviction that God, listen, nobody else hurt me, but he hurt me. He knows the state of my heart. He, he knows how I express that disdain for whatever it is that that person did when I called them an idiot. So I told my wife, I said, baby, I said, that's why I'm dealing with this thing here. Because I realize I can go on for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks unrepented in that area and it becomes easier to sin. Now, if you a little leaven, leavens the whole lump. So if you compromise in that area, see, full-blown sin don't happen in your life all at once. It's a little here, just like the scripture. Here a little, there a little. Precept of unprecept. So, so we begin to compromise here a little, there a little, until we become desensitized in a particular area. And then... Your, ah, may we never get to the place where our conscience is seared. See, that's where these people are. Where their conscience has been, listen, they played around with the mercy of God for such a long time. And they saw no what they thought was any, rep, you know. Come on, no consequences for that situation. And then we keep going. And then we keep going. And then we keep going to, to the point where, you know, pride is such a deceiving influence. Yes, to the point where you get to the point where you really start believing your own hype. You start reading your own emails and you think that you got this relationship with God that nobody else got. And you can you can just listen. You've arrived. You got I ah, watch this now because you got the praises of the people. The praises of the people 
are telling you that you all that and a bag of chips and so now because God haven't dealt with you you're getting the praises of the people stroking your ego uh, but but all of this compromise uh, they don't realize uh, that they themselves are drinking out of that same cup with you making it easy for them to stay in the state that they're in listen you may come into the church one way but God's intent is not for you to stay that same way you may come in your mess and come in your junk glory to God uh, uh, we can't act like the Holy Ghost priest uh, to bring you under uh, policemen to bring you under judgment we gotta let you stay in that situation and let the Holy Ghost work on you but we can't become your enablers glory to God but by, by compromising the gospel you may have come in limping on one side you got a limp on this side glory to God in your personality in your sexual persuasion but you ain't gonna stay that way after a while because if you hear enough of the gospel the Holy Ghost gonna start straightening you out on the inside your warped perception of right and wrong and you might be saying but 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 God knows I need some love but he don't want you to have perverted love he wants you to have perfect love that cast out all fear he wants you to have a healthy love glory to God designed by him he wants you to be loved by if you're a woman he wants you to be loved by a man if you're a man he wants you to be loved by a woman but he don't want you to substitute this thing because you done been wounded you've been hurt and you just want to be loved by anybody or anything let me tell you about that at some point you want to be loved by a dog man becomes so debased for his need for love and not knowing his true source, he'll start at the base level of bestiality. That's where we are in this society. I don't know, where, where am I today? Y'all help me today? That's what happens when you lose the fear of God. So now, it's what makes me feel good. I live in the realm of what makes me feel good. So there's no want to them that fear God. We never have to compromise. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want for any good thing. And then he said, this is the problem right here. This is where we want to go. He says, come ye children, hearken unto me. In other words, not just hear but obey. Whenever you see this Hebrew word hawking, it means hearing and obeying. That's the problem. See, a true disciple of Christ is going to follow him. He becomes the teacher. That's why Jesus did more teaching than he did preaching. And people need teaching because teaching instructs. If all you do, ah, make people feel good, you know, uh, your, your purpose, you said all the time, you know, your promotion, you said your career, you know, uh, 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 you, you, you talk about your haters. You see, if you mess with people in the emotional realm, they can identify with that. But if you bring them into the realm of the word of God, then you'll begin to understand that people ain't your problems. And even if somebody used that emotional thing about your haters, all of us got some if we're, if we're alive. The Bible says love your enemies. Glory to God. And peradventure, God is using some of them people to deal with that stuff that's on the inside of you. You're talking about your haters. You can't keep blaming people for where you are. Glory to God. You got to realize you where you are because you haven't submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So we start stroking the emotional ego and the base level of the living of people and we keep them there rather than teaching them to lift them up. So the scripture says, come ye children, hearken unto me and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. People have to be taught the fear of the Lord. And I said last week that, that what God is doing right now is in 1 Peter chapter uh, 1, uh, verse 4 through 18. 
God is saying that judgment must first start. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. There's some things, uh, bro, there's some things uh, that are about to, I saw some things, man, in the spirit, you know, in dreams. There are some things uh, that are about to happen in our world. There are some things uh, that are also going to happen in our nation. The, 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 the strange things that, that are going to begin to happen, they're going to cause people, if they're not rooted and grounded in Christ, they're going to fall apart at the seams. I, I, I saw I saw three dimensions of, of, of warfare coming to us. Watch this now. I, I saw AI and robotics combined together to control the people. I, I, I saw uh, 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 um, them using the. I saw these Chinook helicopters coming down in an intimidating manner to 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 psychologically intimidate and and put the pressure of. So what that means is they're going to be using technology. AI and they're going to be using behind the scenes the military right here in our nation to control people. Then I saw, I saw this red plane. It was a jet. It was huge. It was spraying this substance all over the place. And I began to see that this, this substance that they were spraying, it was either chemical or biological. But right away, I saw myself in another scene with a backpack on my back with two gallons of water. And I walk into this building and I see a case of water on the floor and I pick up. I scary to get even more because it seems like I have to get water because something's about to happen to the water supply. And then I get out of that dream and I get up and I go to the bathroom and the Lord takes me back into the dream and I saw pressure. I'm driving in a car with my wife and it seems like she's pressing on my right side and she's pressing and she's pressing on my right side and pressing and pressing. And I, I turned to her and I almost wanted to be angry at her. And I said, I can't do that because she's not my enemy. It's not her that's creating this pressure. And the Lord began to speak to me. He says, some of the pressure that's going to happen is going to come through man. But you're going to have to discern, glory to God, that man is not the problem. You'll begin to blame people. And so I, 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 I come out of that scene and I go into a school and I see a teacher. I said, did, did you not see that huge robot in the atmosphere shouting? I mean, shouting intimidatedly at the people. And I began to explain to him the, uh, what that meant. And I said to him, it has something to do with what they're going to do to try to control the children in a school. And then two days later, I get up and I hear uh, EMP, 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 electromagnetic pulse. And the Lord started to speak to me. He said that China is going to, be, going to do this through satellites, going to begin to hit the United States electric grid and, and they'll begin to do things that's going to begin to tinker with just to see how far they can go because ultimately what they want to do is dismantle our uh, 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 atomic arsenal. That's how they can get in. See, do it, dealing with the military part of it, dealing with keeping planes out of the air, all of that will just be them taking little stabs at it. And I heard the Lord said to me that the way that our government is going to explain the way they're going to say, you know, this happened, that happened, but it's not severe, but it is severe because what China is doing is just testing our weak places. So we have to start praying. I don't know how I got on this. We have to start praying. We have to realize that the things that are happening right now are a distraction to us because there's something greater. Listen, that's about to hit. This nation is not going to look like it looks right now. It didn't look. Amen. If we go back four years, it changed drastically. What I bro, what you're going to see between 2024 and 2025, this nation, you ain't going to recognize it. But we, what God's going to do is preserve us because we're in the fear of the Lord. I want you to see how it's, cor uh, how it's correlated. So judgment must first start at, at the house of God. Let me roll. So, so what is the fear of the Lord? It is awe. It describes the majesty of God. 
it, it describes us as his people returning back to us acknowledging the majesty of God. He's majestic. He's holy. And, and his majesty should invoke an awe in our lives. And then reverence is a response to a revelation of God. So we reverence him because we have a revelation of him as God. And then the third component of that, of that, uh, of the fear of the Lord is submission to God. Ah, uh, saints of God, that there are so many people that don't understand the fear of the Lord because they don't understand submission to him. They're submitted to man, but they're not submitted to God. So, when we submit to him, then we receive the benefits of his sovereignty over our lives. And so, there is a condition we have to fulfill to have the fear of the Lord in our life. Look at uh, uh, Psalm 34. Now I look at verse 11 and 12 together. Psalm 34, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12. Are y'all getting anything out of this? I hope you are. Notice what he says. Come ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And then he tells us in verse 12, what it, uh, what man is he that desireth life? So he's about to tell us that if we want the highest quality of life that God offers to us, it comes from our understanding of the fear of the Lord in our lives. Notice what he says. What is he that desireth light, life and loveth many days. So now the fear of the Lord also is attached to longevity. Life and longevity. When people don't fear God, amen, they, they go down destructive paths in life and their lives are cut short. That they may see good. Here's what he tells us. This is what got me when I, I started thinking about, man, I got to watch how I've been thinking and speaking. Keep thy tongue from evil. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, watch your tongue. Keep your, see, we, we think we could just say things in jest. Even when people don't hear it. We think, but God hears it. He's looking at the intent of our heart. And remember, we are to be partakers of his holiness. How is it that we can just let anything come out of our mouth if we truly fear the Lord? So this is teaching. So he says, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. I want to read that out of the Amplified Bible, verse 12. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. In other words, deceitfully. Verse 14. Then it says, King James. Depart from evil. Disassociate with it. And do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Might as well put verse 15 in there. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. But look at verse 16. Might as well throw it in there too. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Might as well put verse number 17. The righteous cry. All of this is attached to the fear of the Lord. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth them and delivereth them out of their troubles. 
Look at verse number 18. The Lord is nigh to them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. All of this is attached to the fear of the Lord. Might as well keep going. Many are the afflictions of the... See? Now watch this now. There's going to be things happening in our world, but you might as well declare it will not come to my house. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth his bones, and not one of them is broken. But notice verse 21. 21. Evil shall slay the wicked. Remember that this book is not written to the, the, the un God. This is covenant, covenant talk. So God's not writing to the world. He's talking to his own people. Listen, what was Israel's problem? If you go back to ancient Israel, Israel always went away from God. And, 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 and it was because it was intermingling with the ungodly, the uncircumcised, the, the, the other nations that God told them to thoroughly destroy. Because what you don't destroy, you will begin to come into covenant with. And so that's what we see happening. Uh, if we don't hate what, I didn't say hate people. If we don't hate what God hates, we will eventually build a tolerance to marry ourselves to it. And so that's what we see happening in the world. Rather than the world becoming more like the church, we see the church becoming more like the world. Amen. So watch this now. And so he says, 21, evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Might as well go ahead, verse 22. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Amen. Bless the Lord. Go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 real quick. Lord, help me, Jesus. When did I start? Somebody tell me. 1220. All right, so, uh, okay. Proverbs 1, 7. So the fear of the Lord benefits you and I. Say it with me. The fear of the Lord benefits you and I. Verse 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's the very beginning of understanding, knowledge. It is the beginning. But fools despise wisdom and instruction and then verse number eight says my son hear the instruction of thy father and forsake, forsake not the law of thy mother so verse seven again the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge look it up go to chapter three real quick see we love the first part of this but let's tie it together look at verse five Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding in some of thy ways. Right? So in all of thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Notice what it says. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. See, that's why, watch this now, besides loving her, why do you think I won't mess up? Y'all, this is an easy answer. The fear of the Lord. So, so now if I have a healthy revelation of the fear of the Lord, I will not commit adultery. Do you see how the fear of the Lord can preserve bloodlines and families? But if I don't have that, I'll mess up on her and I'll be looking for a second one. Then I'll mess up on the second one, and I'll be looking for a third one. Then I'll mess up on the third one, and I'll be looking for a fourth one. There is no fear of the Lord in my life. What kind of a testimony is that, that we're representing God, and we got three, four marriages? What kind of a testimony are we sending to the world who should be under con the conviction by their lifestyles, but ours is just like theirs? Come on, say Amen. This is what's happening in the church. No fear of the Lord. 
So the Bible tells us in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, submitting yourselves one to another, notice how, in the fear of the Lord. So I keep mutually submitting to the Lord and to her because I fear him. I love him. And I love her. Come on, say amen. All right. Go to uh, Proverbs 22 real quick. Proverbs 22 and 4. I just want to give you a few of these scriptures and then I'm going to move on. Proverbs 22 and verse 4. We know this because we look at the, the first part of it. So we, the things that we see happening in the body of Christ is in, not only an absence of the fear of the Lord, that, that, that is the outcome, but the first part of it is humility. Look at verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Look at verse 5. Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. That word forward means perverse. And he doth, and, and, and he that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. All of that attached to humility and the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 19, 23 real quick, and then I'm going to shift. Proverbs 19, 23. The fear of the Lord tended to life, and he that have it shall abide satisfied. Mm -mm -mm. So we can be satisfied with Jesus. We can be satisfied with the, with, with the, 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 the reverence, the, the, the reverential R, that revelation of, of having Jesus. It brings satisfaction in our life. The fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And he that have it, life, shall abide satisfied. Look at this now. He shall not be visited with evil. Oh, isn't that good? Evil's not going to visit your home. Now, what kind of evil is this? It's not the kind of things that, that happen to us periodically. Is that your life will not be so corrupted because you've opened the door to evil. Right. Amen. All right. Let me move real quick. Y'all still here? Yes, sir. All right. Bless the Lord. Yep. I said last week we went to the, the three places that uh, to indicate the, the, the references that we, we dealt with uh, to uh, David's life. And I said these, these four points. Judgment falls where there is irreverence for the holiness of the Lord. In other words, when we no longer reverence his holiness. When our lives are no longer governed by. His holiness. Judgment falls when divine protocols are ignored, such as it was with Usa when they were transporting the uh, Ark of the Covenant on a new cart. And because God is holy, although David was ignorant to how that cart was supposed to be transport, transported, Usa, in his sincerity, sought to steady the, 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 the Ark on the cart. Because he himself knew how prized the, 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 the ark was to the nation of Israel, what it represented. But God had already given them a prescription of how the ark of the covenant was supposed to be transported. And it was holy. And only the priest was supposed to handle it. And that with staves. And they never touched it from that standpoint unless they were authorized to touch it. But they handled it with stays straight, straight through the, the, the rings of each side. And so he was put to death because he violated a 
protocol. Judgment falls where the fear of the Lord is rejected. Tell your neighbor's neighbor, don't reject the fear of the Lord. And then the fourth point was this. Repentance is key to restoring lost reverence for God or the fear of the Lord. Repentance is always the way back. Tell your neighbor's neighbor. Repentance is always the way back. All right. Let's start here and then we're going to flow. So there are many that have taken on blatant, ill, uh, irreverent postures of pride and arrogance in, dis in uh, disregard for God's holiness and how they represent him before people. Much of this is speaking about uh, those who are in leadership. He is to be feared and highly reverenced in our worship. I thank God for the rawness in which we worship. There's no pump. There's no circumstance. You know what I mean? There's no frill. All you see is what we got. And I, I believe that God has done this. And as much as I would love to, as the pastor, I'm praying God, send us, uh, I'm praying God, send us a male, uh, a female, keyboard player. God, God ain't listening to me. He ain't hearing me. Because that's not what he's planned for this season. So he wants us to, out of reverence, worship him. Not out of form, not out of fashion, not out of ritual, but raw worship unto a holy God and he's getting that from us don't you ever get tired of doing it amen bless the Lord so he is to be feared and highly reverenced in our worship of him and so what is happening is we are producing an irreverent culture which believe God makes accommodations for sin Every true worshiper approaches God in truth. They who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth is, I can't hide nothing from you, God. I come just as I am. Amen. Bless the Lord. So that, that's, that's me reverencing him. I come broken. I, I, listen, I, I don't run from the presence of God. I run to the presence of God. When, when, when you lose uh, the, the reverence for God's holiness, you run away. But when you have a reverence for God's holiness in your life, regardless of what state your life is in, you run to him. So a true worshiper, worshiper comes into the presence of God with a healthy but soul-shattering fear. God does, after all, punish sin, even in those who he uh, who, who, who are redeemed. Of course, we see this in Hebrews chapter 2, I mean 12 verse 6, reminds us whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. And then it says, see, so we got to understand, this is God judging us. It may seem light, depends on the severity of it, right? But God knows how to chastise us in such a way. To correct us, whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, he scourges every son whom he receives. Now, I love this. I, I, I look back at, at David when he numbered, uh, he had uh, Joab number the host. And the plague came. And Joab says, okay, you disobey God. There's three things. There's three judgments that's coming. Which one you want? You want your enemies to come and tear you all up for three months? You want to be in uh, famine for uh, this amount of time? Uh, uh, or, or you want to fall in the hands of the Lord? And David said, let me fall in the hands of God. Listen, in other words, he said, I can't trust man, but I know your mercy, God. See, see, man might not let up on this judgment, but God, I know you're merciful. Amen. So... In essence, you and I take this to heart. We, we, want to, we want to wrap our faith around this scripture right here. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 31. And I'm going to read that with 30 and 31 in the TPT. But the King James verse 31 says, it is a fearful thing, that's reverence, to fall into the hands of the living. That's what you and I want to fall. We want to fall right into his hands. He's the one that knows how to fix us. He's the one that knows how to correct us. And when, he, when God works on you, he does it well. 
Look at the uh, 30th and the 31st verse. Listen to it rather out of the King James. For we know him who said, I have the right to take vengeance and pay them back for their evil. And also the Lord God will judge his own people. It is the most terrifying thing of all to come under the judgment of the living God. We have to remember this. Now, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28 goes on to say, let us have grace. Thank God for the new covenant, whereby we may serve God acceptable. Notice how with reverence and godly fear. The word translated serve is a word for worship. The writer is talking about acceptable worship. He lists two key elements, reverence and godly fear. The reason he gives for such worship, here it is, because God is a consuming fire. Oh, do you do you know what happens when we come into the presence of a holy God? We give him consent to burn stuff up. Woo! Don't tell your neighbors a neighbor. Don't miss your time with God on the altar. So when we reverence him, God releases his all-consuming fire, not to consume us, but to burn up everything that's not like him. That's why we that's why we we, we we reverence him, because we know that when he comes into his presence, he's a loving father and he will automatically start burning up everything in our lives. that's not like him. So never stay away from him. Run to him. And we have a generation that don't even know him. They know the pastor, but they don't know Jesus. They know how to do church. They know church and it. Yeah. Watch this now. They know church and they know how to the, the protocols of church. They know the behaviors. They know how to they know how to navigate in that whole realm. And then the pastor is the most important person in their life. The devil is a liar. Jesus is the most important person in my life. So reverence carries a positive connotation. It describes a sense of awe as we perceive the majesty of God. Godly fear, on the other hand, is the essence of profound awe and intimidation as we see the power. We should be intimidated by God's holiness, who is an all-consuming fire that refers to his power to destroy his holy reaction against sin. True worship then demands a clear awareness of God's holiness and a deep sense of sinfulness and a sincere cry for purging. That's why I dealt with you last week with, with uh, David in Psalm 51. That's what he was saying, God, purge me. In Psalm 51, the, the, the sin that he committed with Bathsheba, uh, there was no written code in the law for that sin. Only judgment. David was supposed to be stoned and killed. But he says, Lord, purge me with his hop. So God is holy, merciful, and long-suffering, but he will judge and take you out of here early. You know, see, we're seeing all of these, what, what the world is going to call scandals. You know, uh, I shared this with my wife uh, maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, Pastor, uh, if I call this name, and I'm not going to do that, but from Nigeria, who has a, 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 a very large church, to, I'll tell you the name of the church, the synagogue of all nations, all right? And so this man did some very good things, good things, humanitarian things all over the world, but he was operating under an, a, another spirit, all right? And so what looked like deliverance was really, really was not deliverance. And so people were, were literally putting him in the stead of Christ. I'll tell you this for sure, that whenever your star gets brighter than Jesus, it's time to go. He'll take you out of here. Because you begin to obscure the glory of who Jesus is. And so God said, no, I'm not going to compete with another human. you be out of here. And so uh, all of a sudden, PBC, uh, uh, BBC start to do a documentary on this man's life and all of these women begin to talk about how he had abused them. All of this stuff now is God is cleaning up his house. 
He's cleaning up his house. And I'm going to tell you what's coming after this. Y'all ready for this? Revival. Yeah. I'm telling you. Re revival is going to come out of God's purging his house. We're going to see a move of God in this generation. So we soon forget that God swiftly just sinned and sinful acts quickly in the first testament. He still, he, 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 he still judges sin now. Some are even now bearing the consequences of sinful acts and sinful choices and decisions. The, the latter part of what I didn't say to you is the man didn't even see his 58th birthday. So I believe God was already dealing with him. But when he did not repent, the outcome was. Why are these judgments seemingly undetected? Simply because many are living under the same judgments and consequences and have no discernment to distinguish a judgment of God upon their lives. So what I'm saying is that the leaders are living under in the compromise and the people are living in the compromise all of them are being dealt with so they can't see it and, and they'll call it an attack of the enemy but yet it will be the consequences of their own repentant sins many are dead spiritually the anointing of and glory of god has already departed uh, from them but those who have no discernment can't see it and so, listen, when, this is the mercy of God. When God says the gifts and call, callings are without repentance, God can't take that back. He holds himself accountable for that. So as long as that person is still alive, guess what they're operating in? The gift. And people can't, they can't distinguish the gift from, is the glory of God still on them? They see results. Why? Because you can preach the gospel in pretense or in truth. The Bible says as long as the gospel is preached. Why? Some people can still get saved even when a vessel is messed up. Ooh, Jesus. So don't look at the results and say, oh, man, God's frowning. God, God, God's smiling on that situation. No. God's already dealt with that. All right, let's go. Y'all ready? Okay, Leviticus 10.10. And this is what God is saying. And that ye put a difference between holy and unholy. And between unclean and unclean. These lines of demarcation have been blurred in the church. When God says this, he didn't mean it just for the old covenant. He means that for his covenant people of today too. You got to put a distinction between holy and unholy and between clean and unclean. So the church has become infatuated with the world and its present culture. Let me say it again. The church has become infatuated with the world and its present. You, you, you think about some of the gospel artists. Yeah. I mean, I mean, anointed, broken man uh, have birthed some of the, 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 I mean, some of these songs, man, you know, came straight from the throne of God. And all of a sudden, that raw place, that broken place, God released revelation, blessed the whole body of Christ. All of a sudden, now you get a little bit of publicity, you get a little bit of fame, and all of a sudden, now you got to connect with this gospel, uh, this, this artist over here from the world. You got to do a collaboration now. That's, that's, that's the clean, I mean, that's the holy and the unholy. That's the clean and the unclean. It's an unholy mixture. And God can't bless that. So now you begin to blur the lines of the righteousness and holiness of God in the eyes of people. Watch this now. People who could otherwise be genuinely given over in sincerity to Jesus Christ. But now they don't have a reason to watch this now. They don't have a reason to let go of their past because they see you compromise. You're collaborating with Jay-Z. You're collaborating with this one, with Snoop Dogg. You're collaborating with this one. Kirk Franklin, you know, he, he, you know, he, 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 he want to be uh, 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 easy. What, what's his name? No, no, 
Kanye. He, he wanted to be Kanye. You know, he wanted to be the Kanye of the gospel. Well, guess what? You want Kanye's demons? Because you're going to get them. Because if, if you're going to you're gonna have to compromise at that level. Yeah, he do. And you see them in his eyes. So now when you go to his concert, guess what you're getting? You ain't getting the Holy Spirit. You're getting demons. And you know how they say in the world, you know, people who are religious minded, uh, you catch the whole. No, you don't catch the Holy Spirit. Now, you, you go into these concerts, you catching demons. Yes, you are. And now, now watch this now. Now these people are not even submitted to a pastor. You know what? They got business managers. That's why they're able to compromise because nobody is speaking into their lives. Now they're above the law. Oh, Jesus. Watch this now. Go to James chapter 4. Y'all still here? James chapter 4. Oh, Jesus. James chapter 4, verse 4. Look how strong this language is. You adulterous and adulteress. Know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. God says, I'm against you. He says, I'm against you because you have now become an unholy mixture. That's syncretism at the highest level. And, and so it, it don't stop there. But, but watch this now. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. So if we don't preach this word and teach this word. And if, if we as good Bereans don't go through the word, let the Holy Spirit convince us of sin, judgment and righteousness, then our lives will not conform to the authority of the word. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion have light with darkness? Might as well go ahead and tie six, uh, 15 and 16 in there. Oh, my God, I got to keep on going. Jesus, Jesus. Look at this now. And what concord or what agreement have Christ with Belial? That's the devil. Or what part have he that uh, uh, have he that believeth with an infidel, an unbeliever? Or what agreement have the temple of God with with idols? And most churches have become an idolatrous, oh my God. It, it, see, you don't have to put up a wooden idol somewhere. It's idolatrous in your music. It's idolatrous in how you worship the pastor. It's idolatry. He says, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God have said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Look what verse 17 says. I believe God is saying this to the church today. Wherefore come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And of course, the last verse says, and I will be your father, a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. I believe verse 17 is what God is saying in this hour. If you're in those kinds of churches, he's speaking to you, come out from among them. Ezekiel 44, 23 says, and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. The problem is that there is not teaching priests in this hour. 
and teaching. See, see, we, we look at we look at the priesthood of old, but don't look at uh, the fact that we need to learn from the example that were teaching preaching. You know what they taught? They taught the Torah so that people could conform to God's standard of right. The prophets were also teaching prophets. So they always called the people back. They didn't prophesy houses and cars and, and all promotions and all this stuff. No, they always called you back back to the standard of holiness so whenever watch this now whenever a prophet showed up the people were afraid because <laughs> they were afraid judgment was about to come what is god saying now oh nobody fears prophets today <laughs> so profane it, watch this now uh, that which is profane it means to cross cross over improperly in other words, to protrude in an area that, 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 that you are not authorized. Literally to a walking past the threshold without proper authorization. That's what it means. Entering a sacred temple who is unauthorized or unfit. Many times the priests were uh, unclean. They were defiled. And so they could not perform the service of the priesthood. Now, let me finish and give you these uh, eight things and then I'm done. Things that are identifiable in a person's life when the fear of the Lord has been lost. Y'all ready for this? And I'm done. Number one, you will openly see the same sin of the anointed cherub manifesting. The Lucifer complex will dominate their life. Here it is, pride and self hortation above God and his will with no regard for consequences. I'm going to say that again. And this is how you know. You will openly see the same sin of the anointed cherub manifesting. It was the iniquity of pride. Lucifer, the Lucifer complex will dominate their life. Pride and self-exaltation uh, above God and his will with no regard to consequences. Number two, this person will not put a difference between the holy and what is profaned by God. When God says something is profaned, it is profaned. Number three, you will see sexual sin and perversion without any regard for judgment. The kind of stuff that is going to come out this year should not surprise us. Because God has been warning. Number four, you will see them in close association and friendship with the world. Thus making them an enemy of God. I don't care how anointed they are. How gifted they are. They're an enemy of God. And they, 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 they need our prayers. I'm telling you. They need our prayers. Because if they don't come out, they're going to die in that state. Number five. Gain in a lavish lifestyle will become substituted for godliness. Number six, the holiness of God and his word will be trampled upon by adding and subtracting from it to accommodate seekers. And so they won't preach the whole counsel of God. Number seven, sin will become... Uh, they'll, they'll put it this way. Sin will become my and your issues and make mis uh, and, 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 and mistakes that all of us have. Therefore, repentance is never the remedy. So they'll begin to look at uh, uh, sin as just your issues. And they'll call them, we all make mistakes. So therefore, repentance won't be the outcome. Number eight. You see them drawing people to themselves rather than leading them to Christ. This is how you know people have no fear of the Lord. Did you get anything out of this? Amen. Let's stand and let's, let's pray. Oh, Jesus. Let's pray. We, we need to be fervent in our prayers and, and watchful and vigilant in this hour. That there are too many things that are happening in the realm of the spirit. Too many things that as watchmen, we need to be alert. We need to be praying. Tell your neighbor, say, you need to be praying and watching. So even as these scandals, these things are coming out, uh, these are God pulling back the veil. There's nothing hidden that shall not be uncovered. 
And God is uncovering things. He's purging the church. He's doing the work. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares in this hour. The cream of the crop is going to rise. The nobodies. Mm. The nobodies, people who are not on platforms and stages, uh, uh, God is going to begin to use because he's been cultivating people like yourself and myself for a long time. But we got to pray and be vigilant and watchful. And I would say pray as, as you begin to see these things happen, these leaders. They need God's mercy. And I pray that they, they, they have enough inner fortitude to, to, to not want their ego and their reputation to be preserved, lose that, make themselves of no reputation and repent before God, be, be broken before uh, man and God, and literally let God's mercy come and wash and cleanse them and they be restored. Because there are millions of people that are following these people that are on these platforms in this hour. You're going to see people who, who, who never had the opportunity to have notoriety by, by television in, in the 90s through, through YouTube and other platforms. These people have been preserved. They've been hidden. And God is going to begin to launch them forth with a purity of a word. You're going to see real prophets who are going to call the, the, the church back to repentance. They're going to prophesy the mind of God. And people are going to be broken before God once again. And I believe the outcome is going to be revival. So let's pray for revival. Come on, let's pray. Come on. Father, you declare... Will you not revive thine own work that thy people might praise you? Father, we thank you for your dealings. Lord, wh whatever it is that you want to do in us as this local body of believers, we lay our hearts, oh, come on, saints, uh, we lay our hearts open and bare. Father, there is nothing hidden from your, your, your all-searching eyes. You see all, you know all. Father, we thank you right now for your mercy. We thank you lord god hallelujah that even as we're living in this hour of darkness it is an hour of power it is an hour of provision it is an hour of your will being done it is an hour of your glory being revealed it is an hour of your son being brought back to his rightful place the idols of man are coming down the the the, the idols of, of the personality cults are coming down the very things that have obscured the glory of jesus in the eyes of the people all over the globe Lord God we thank you for the you've been merciful but we thank you for the dealings of the Lord Father you, 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 you're bringing Lord God uh, 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 you're rearranging and you're causing an order to come to your house you're making the crooked places straight Father in the name of Jesus we stand in awe of you we stand in the gap even now Father and we pray Lord that even on the heels of, of you releasing Lord your corrective message first in your church because you said judgment must first start at the house at the house of God and if it starts at the house of God what shall it be of the world father we know that you will expose some things even this year Lord at the highest echelons of this government Lord from the White House uh, uh, the Congress I both say the city there are things that are about that there are scandals there are things that are about to be uncovered I call God says, I'm going to humble. I'm going to humble this nation. Glory to God. But I'm going to cause an elevation to take place in the midst of my people. Father, we pray right now. Let, let revival come on the heels of every com corrective measure that you release even in the midst of this nation. And God, peradventure that you will be merciful. Even the things that you've shown in vision and dreams. God, you reveal preemptively Lord you reveal so that you may redeem father we know that there are sleeper cells right here in this nation we know that China has an agenda God we know that even in ancient times you used the Assyrians to correct even your people Israel God we thank you that even Lord God that in your sovereignty as you're allowing things to unfold we thank you Lord 
Lord, that even as we, your people, according to your word, if my people who are called by my name will seek your face, humble ourselves, and turn from our wicked ways, then will we hear from heaven and you would heal our land. Father, you're arresting our attention as a people, and we thank you that the outcome will be healing, restoration coming to this nation. Shekoboshete. Let restoration come, Lord. Let revival hit every house. Let prayer meetings break out in every home. Let us not wait just to get to the house of God or Zoom. Let prayer, let revival break out in our homes. God, may we walk around uh, like a living, breathing house of prayer under the control and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Shekoboshete. Brekata. God, we thank you. And we thank you, Lord, that, that, that all across this nation and the nations of the world, uh, souls will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we'll find the uh, we'll find the backslider and the prodigals returning back into under the covert uh, of your wings. Uh, God, we thank you for restoration of backsliders uh, of the prodigal sons and daughters uh, because the fear fear of God is returning to your house once again that I bro I hear God say there's going to be power power convincing power manifesting through the lives of his people it will not only be said that in times past that there were men and women that walked under such a glory that even their shadow began to heal God says that in this hour as you consecrate as you begin to enter back into the the inner chamber of me I'm going to release a glory that you have not seen before and I will begin to begin to convince the sinner of a need to repent People uh, will begin to weep around you. They will begin to weep. And I will send people to you. God says be sensitive. Get out of your flesh. Get out of your mind. Be prepared the Lord says. For I will send people. At a moment that you're not expecting. Be you ever ready. To minister. For I am breaking them. And you will find them in a broken moment standing before you. And for I say to you, be ready to pour in the oil. For I will begin to restore. I will begin to make whole. And I will begin to set at one again. So be ye ready, saith the Spirit of the Lord. For my glory shall even rest upon you for the harvest that is yet before you, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, give the Lord praise.